Welcome to another episode of Dungeon Hammer, brought to you by One Mind Syndicate. I am your host, Gershwan, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. That's our creature. And the sound alchemist. And today we're going to be talking about cheating in Dungeons & Dragons 5e. What is what? When I say cheating, obviously... <laughs> Well, what do you guys think when I say cheating? Because well, I didn't know that there was different yeah, versions it, it, of it cheating. It could come from the players. It could come from the DM. Oh, okay. Sometimes, like, cheating has a, a wide area that it'll encompass. It also kind of depends group to group. Mm -hmm. Because it depends on what, what kind of power you think the DM should have right. and should use. And the kind of trust that you put in your players and DM and all that stuff. Right. So let's talk about cheating uh, when it comes to the DM first. So first and foremost, the one thing that allows the DM to cheat, I think, is the DM screen. Yep. Like, you don't know what's going on back there. You don't know what die he's rolling, what number it's landing on. Like, you, you really don't know what's going on. So you have that trust in your DM to be, like, legit about everything and be like, oh, my character didn't die when in reality, like, he should have. So I guess I have a question for you two. Hmm. I guess we should. This is something that you should probably do with your group before you start session one. And I'm assuming we never did. <laughs> no, we uh, we didn't do anything. Before se session. session zeros are important. I've never done one, and that's probably a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. But I think well, I haven't done it because I've played mostly with new players, and they kind of don't know what to expect. So I get to mold you guys to As what the I want game you to goes be. On. Instead of letting <laughs> us know beforehand, no, let's just do this. Yeah. yeah. But. What do you do? You guys think fudging dice is cheating? Yes, yes. But that's because we're war gamers, and right. that's something that uh, yeah I was gonna bring up because of the fact that we know fudging dice rolls is just that's like a a game ender on, uh, unless you're an orc player, you could fudge dice rolls if you're an orc player, <laughs> or just say your toughness is whatever you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, that's not fudging dice though. Mm -mm. That's just straight up lying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I think because we came from forty k. Um, when when and and then fudging dice rolls, the thing that really bothered me about fudging dice rolls because you do have to accept the fact that there is a plot that the DM is trying to push, and the the dice rolls need to be a certain type of way, especially if you're you're playing with a DM who's not as uh, um, uh, creative or like can think on the spot. Um, but the thing that got me the most mad uh, when I first started playing was the fact that um, they would be very apparent. Like it'd be like, I'm, uh, I'm, I have like a what is it? The AC? I have an AC of like twenty, mm -hmm. and you've been hitting me every single time. Yeah. Like there's something, something's up. So here's the thing about that though. Yeah. Because I've I've been in that situation too, but at the DM side. Mm -hmm. Where one of my players is at a high DC, I gave him the super awesome armor, and mm -hmm. I hit them every time. Yeah. And it's like a running joke in our campaign because he's always like, oh, yeah, I got a 23 AC, but you still manage to hit me every time. And I never fudged any dice. Yeah. It just happens to roll out that way. So yeah. I, I don't know if that situation you actually were getting fudged yeah. or if you weren't. Yeah. But just know that it can also mm -hmm. be a legit they hit you just right. because you have a 24 or 20 whatever in ac yeah. doesn't mean that you're unhittable yeah but what if the fudging is in your favor uh that's also shitty i've i've had that situation or uh, yeah we've all been in the situation where sometimes there is one specific person that gets favored on, at the table hmm. to the point where it's just like uh all right, don't even roll. Just just say what you want to do, and it happens. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think the the important part for a DM to keep in mind uh, is that you develop patterns, uh, and those patterns really affect uh, the player's perception of you cheating. So, for example, like what you, what you're what you were saying about having a high AC, but you as a DM still hit the person. You're not fudging any dice rolls. Statistically, that's not going to happen again next session. Where I, I think I've been in a situation with the DM where there is consistent, there's consistency in the way that fudging dice rolls is is, is a thing. Okay. So. You think that's to blame because they have a bad poker face, or you think if they were like really good at masking their deceit or whatever, um, it wouldn't affect you as much? 
Uh, yeah, I think they 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 did they did not have a good poker face, and there was no reason sometimes to fudge certain things. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like I've been in other uh, sessions with people that you could tell are fudging dice rolls, but the narrative kind of makes sense. So it's like, okay, well, I'll suspend my so when it anger. when it benefits the narrative, does it still bother you? Um. Uh, I I mean no, not not necessarily no. Would you still consider it cheating? Um, because technically it is. Well, right? so in that situation, uh, if it's just a one-time thing, then no, it's not really cheating. You're just, as a DM, you're using the tools that you have. Um, but if it's consistent, then yes, I would I say guess if it, it, you're saying if it's a crutch that you rely on too mm-hmm. easily, then yeah. it's kind of bullshit. So I have a confession. You're cheating. I'm a you, dirty cheater. You never roll die. Or you no, never... I, I have fudged dice before. Like I not super often, but there's been times when you kind of read the table and either you've been ahead, been in a few combats when one person is getting all the killing blows, killing all the bad guys. So you're like, okay, he killed the bad guy again, but I'm gonna give somebody else the chance to kill the bad guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the next person who hits him is gonna really kill him. Um, stuff like that that i don't i don't see it as cheating because if it makes the people at your table happy Mm -hmm. then i think it's a good thing i don't think blanket statement fudging dice is cheating is i don't believe that that's true in my opinion because i think there are instances that fudging the dice is necessary or not as heinous i guess Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um what other types of cheating do you think? So, the the reason that I'm bringing this up is in the DM or in the Dungeon Master's Guide, I believe, or maybe the Player's Handbook, it says that the DM has has the prerogative mm-hmm. to change things up. Yeah. Like, let's say if uh, in, trolls, they uh, in, infamously have weakness to fire. Yeah. Would you think it's cheating if a DM changed that to ice or something? No, because it's still giving him a weakness. Yeah. What if what if you took it all out altogether? That's fine. It could be a different type of troll or whatever. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, I think the important part and the only times where you can call a DM out for cheating is when they are not consistent in in that. So, for right. example, like if you do have a troll and he he's not like you attack him with fireball and it's like yeah you do damage and then the, the next, next time... session an, another person attacks fireball and oh no the fireball doesn't is doesn't affect them as much sure and that's cheating then yeah. i think then that's when you should call your, out your dm and be like well you need to be consistent um mm-hmm. through sessions unless there's like something like oh it's a completely different plane and there's a different type of troll and that kind of stuff makes sense yeah but if you're hitting the same troll and it's like fireworks one turn and that doesn't work the other turn it's like okay yeah that would be really annoying too if it was in that ex- exact same combat mm-hmm. and they don't give you any reason why yeah i guess like let's say they have like a cloak on that like protects them after they got hit yeah obviously you don't want to get hit by fire if you know that's your weakness or their form shifts and adapts after every time they take a hit so Mm -hmm. after they get by fire they take extra but then they change in some way so that they're not as affected to it you have to definitely describe what's going on to make it apparent to your players that i'm not just making shit up behind the screen yeah now speaking of the screen though have you ever played a game without a dm screen as the DM, obviously. Um, yes, but it was like a small mini session. It wasn't really that. It was for a new player, so. Uh-huh. But do you feel like the DM scream kind of insensitized? Or incentivizes. Ins- incentivizes people to cheat? Because it's like, oh, you don't know what I'm doing back here. To some people it does. You get to let it in their face. Like when they, um, like we have a friend who, he's, he hasn't been a DM yet. But when he is a DM, we know that he's going to fudge dice rolls against the sound <laughs> alchemist. He's going to try to, like, murder you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like, you could have... It, and I think by giving him the DM screen... That's it's, it's enabling. Gonna be, yeah, it's going to be like, okay, this is, your t- this is your chance to get back at the sound mm-hmm. alchemist and make him, like, suffer for, for nothing, really. But, yeah. <laughs> for his own enjoyment. Yeah. So I guess if you're in that situation, sound alchemist, mm-hmm. do you think that... I wouldn't do anything because it's fun to see him revel in happiness. 
to to see what like kind of gets him off, I guess. Mm, but so you would be fine when yeah. playing in a campaign because with... I think it'll be more like like you were saying like it's not like I mean it it, it would kind of look malicious in a way since he's like targeting me, but him targeting me specifically leaves the two of you assuming like we're playing in the same campaign yeah, yeah. open to do more open-ended things so what about your fourth character you roll him into the campaign knowing that he's going to die in a few sessions you think that'd still be fun for you yeah because i'd be working because it's not just a game of D anymore it's a game of survival on top of it so now i'd be kind of like working around more things doing things more uh i guess more like I'm not just gonna open a door and expect nothing to pop out. I'm gonna be kind of like ready for it. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I think uh, you are a specific type of player um, that uh, that's kind of unique. Um, I don't. If I was in your situation and I saw somebody like specifically targeting you, yeah, I would not be like, oh, it's, yeah. it's fine. I'm kind of in that same boat, yeah. 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 So, but I, but that does bring up the point. Then, as a player of Dungeons and Dragons, you need to understand. You need to kind of, uh, kind of like what you were saying in session zero, tell the the or, yeah, make the DM understand that you are a certain type of player, and if. And some things might not even come up in session zero that you might not think about to ask or mm -hmm. or have a discussion about. Some things are going to just pop up as you're playing a campaign. And it might just come down to finding a group that you can trust. Um, yeah. And it might not be the first group that you play with. might not be the second group that you play with. You just kind of got to branch out and find the people that you actually mesh with and play the game the same way you want to play the game mm -hmm. so you can actually trust each other. Like if I was in your sound sound alchemist situation in that campaign, I would not want to play in that campaign. But that's I would just say, you know what? Yeah, you guys play this. I'm just gonna go right. find another group to play with or whatever. Because mm -hmm. that's a, like switching this over to Warhammer 40k. Think about it this way: like, you know, he's gonna bring an army specifically tailored to fight against you. Yeah, but in that situation, it's different because you you and him are in the same uh, boat. Uh, yeah. like you guys have the yeah. same resources. Whereas, like in Dungeons and Dragons, the yeah, I guess DM the DM does not have has all resources. the power. Yeah. You can say you have a heart attack, you're dead. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess if that kept happening, then yeah. I mean, you're not even giving me a chance at that point. Yeah. Um, now as far as cheating, uh, player wise, player side, yeah, I do it all the time. Classic. That's interesting. Um, because sometimes it doesn't even seem like I feel you like are. you do it accidentally. Because you don't know how to play. Is yeah, that it? yeah. Part part of it it is it is that, but also it's about sensing the DM and like if you are a player, you know, and, fight fire with fire. And yeah, also like because as a player, you know that the DM has more power than you do. Mm -hmm. So if you could bend the DM's will to, in, in your favor, then you better do that. Because at the end of the day, he could just say no to whatever you're trying to do. True. So what I would do is oftentimes I would be like, I would do something. Like give myself extra damage, give myself extra uh, AC or or whatever, um, and then just look at the DM and see if he like calls me out on it. And if he doesn't, it's like all right, cool, I'm keep doing this. <laughs> I feel like that is an awful thing to do, <laughs> and that that is not something that you should be doing at the table. And uh, yeah, I would I would not want to play with you if you did but that you in my did. game. But you did, because because we played in a campaign where I did that. And it would, and the thing about Dungeons and Dragons is what's cool about it is that if you do cheat as a player, because the DM has all the power, he can just reverse that. And it, I think he did. I think like. But if he doesn't would, know you're yeah. cheating, the DM has that? so many things to juggle. Yeah. He's not going to write down all of your stats so that he knows how much damage you should be doing and all this. But then it goes back to so in like let's say I would give myself more damage, and. I was killing this monster w way sooner than um, what the DM was expecting. The DM can easily say like, "Oh, but he has a potion, and now he now the damage that you're doing doesn't really matter." So but that's why I think that cheating as a player in Dungeons and Dragons isn't as bad. It's not as it's definitely not as bad as like a competitive game like 40k. Well, semi-competitive game like 40k, because the DM has all the power to just be like, uh, "I could just change." Your, but if the your if the DM world. doesn't know that you're cheating, he's not going to do that. I know, but I'm also not affecting um, his plot because if I was affecting his plot, then he would he would um, create something so that the plot would change. Uh, not necessarily. 
Yeah, because, okay, so in, in a situation, uh, I'm going to throw out a situation that happened where I was stuck in a room. And I think the DM was expecting me to die there. And I said, well, I have, uh, I forget what the spell is. It's the teleporting spell. Dimension door. Yeah. And I have that. And I'm just going to dimension door out of here. And then he, he was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, you can do that. Um, and it wasn't something Wait, that so I So you had never prepared. had that? I did have oh, it, but okay. like, like I was supposed to prep it and, and, and like, he wanted me to like do things like that, but I didn't. Um, and I didn't tell him that I had it. Mm-hmm. So it is one of those situations where he could have said, no, dimension door doesn't work here. For some reason, there's like some magical or yeah, magical Anti-magic. canceling thing. Yeah. But he didn't, so it's one of those situations where because you're the DM and you have all the power, uh, my cheating doesn't affect the the gameplay that much. Because at the end of the day, it's just narrative. I completely, I could not disagree with you more on this point. Yeah, I think if a player, if you're cheating, oh, that's so bad. That just that's so bad because that ruins the trust in everybody. How many? How many situations have you been in where you can tell that the player is cheating? I trust my players. <laughs> I don't. I never expect them to be cheating, and if if they, if it seems like they are, I chalk it up to a mistake, yeah. and I'll try to call them like, "Are you sure that's what's going on?" And it usually is a mistake. I've never ran into it. I never discovered that somebody was cheating in my game purposely. Hmm. Because I I feel like. I feel like you have an adversarial viewpoint between DM and player. Yeah. That should not be there. That, that that's not a thing that in a healthy game of Dungeons and Dragons yeah. should be there. Yeah. And maybe I, I don't know. But maybe that's the whole point going back to what we were saying where uh, you, as a player you have to be you have to let the DM know that I'm, I'm expecting you to do this this and this. Um you should also uh in session 0 or like sometime in the beginning let the dm know like i see you as like a an opponent and i thought i played that way and i thought that like um even when you guys have dm for me i thought it does don't you guys get the vibe that like i am trying to get the better of the dm well yeah because that's feel like different that's that's the game because i think the way you're seeing it as like the dm is presenting challenges and obstacles for the narrative to progress yeah and you're like, I can't have it because I need the narrative to progress. So the DM is, in your view, the ultimate villain. Yeah. Which I see that. Yeah. Um, how, are, how? When you said that the DM and the player are not against each other, how do you like explain that? Because at the end of the day, D&D is a bunch of people sitting around a table trying to tell a story. Yeah. And if there was no bad guys or no villains in the story... Then that would be a pretty boring story. Make believe. You so just make believe. Yeah. So when a when a DM puts a bad guy in front of you or an obstacle in front of you, it's not to be like, I got you. You're dead now. It's to like, okay, this is an obstacle in your way that you're gonna have to overcome in order to achieve your goals. Like as a DM, I want to see my players succeed. I don't want to kill my players. Uh-huh. If it happens, then that sucks. Mm. You guys weren't prepared. Or you guys did something wrong, or the DM, as a DM, I screwed up and threw something too hard at you. But I'd never go into a game thinking, all right, I'm going to try to mess them up. I'm going to try to kill the whole so party. So in your mind, if a player dies, that's on that's a DM's fault? No, it depends on the situation. Hmm. Um, I think I heard somebody say, it might have been like web DM or something, that level 1 to 5, if a player dies, most likely it's a DM's fault. And 6 up, it's the player's fault. Because in 5th edition, it's super hard to kill players, um, just the way that the CR system works. Hmm. Um, but it, So if it does happen, either it can go either way. Either the, me as a DM, I, I overestimated what my players could do, I threw too much, or maybe I depleted their resources so much that mm-hmm. by the time they got to this, re, or this um, fight or obstacle, it was just too much for them. Mm-hmm. Or... The players just made mistake after mistake after mistake, and it ended up getting one or all of them killed. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I've done a TPK before, or close to it. And Total that's, party kill, for those yeah. who don't know. And in that situation, I feel like it was the pl- on the players, not necessarily on me. 
So when the whole party died, did you feel bad or yeah. did you feel good? I feel bad whenever a player dies because mm. as a player, I know how much time I, and effort I put into my characters. Mm-hmm. And if I know the people at my table and I'm DMing, I don't want to like squander that or like end this person's story. Because you, you kind of have like a vision in your brain like, oh, this is what I want my character to end up as, mm-hmm. this badass, whatever. Mm-hmm. And to just like, oh, you have an unpoetic end in this fight pit in hell or whatever. Mm-hmm. It kind of makes me like I feel bad. Like I don't. I, don't, I usually don't. Uh, I let the dice tell the story in this situation. Like when things are going bad, I'm not gonna fudge dice and like to ensure that everybody survives mm-hmm. because that then that just completely takes all the stakes out of the game. But at the same time, you're saying like if they do die in the fighting pits in hell, it's like that is anticlimactic for whatever. Yeah. I think the the reason that you might think uh, what I'm saying is so. Um, me versus the DM. Yeah, it uh, is because of the type of DM that you are and the type of player that you are. And I don't think... Like, you are the... You are a good DM. Like, you are what a DM should be. Whereas, I've played with other DMs who... When you were mentioning, like, you're supposed to design almost like a puzzle for the team or for the group. Throw it out there and say, okay, solve it. And you are deriving the the fun of the game from watching them try to solve this puzzle whether it's like a monster or an actual puzzle um there are there have been situations where um sometimes you throw up like if you're the dm and you throw that puzzle out there there have been dms that actually change the rules of the puzzle while the party is still trying to figure it out and that's when like um that's when it goes cheating. that's when it goes from like Oh, the DM's not just, you know, enjoying us seeing this. The DM actually is trying to, like, ruin the fun for us. Uh, Yeah, it could be. Or it's just, like, changing things so that they don't follow the rules. Because I think you are a person that follows the, the book. And if you have a DM who doesn't really follow the book and is more, um, more open to changing things, then why should... Why should um, why should the player not do the same? If the DM is changing things from the rule, why you know why can't the the player? Um, I think that's why. But but obviously, yeah. I don't. You're not um, you're not that type of player. You're not that type of DM. So if I was playing in your campaign, I wouldn't cheat. Did you already say that you did though? <laughs> but 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 I understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah yeah, and um, it was only like two sessions. Anyways. So <laughs> yeah, it was like out of a, a, out of a three shot. session campaign. Um, <laughs> something that you said sparked something. Oh, something to kind of I guess if you want to safeguard yourself from cheating, from cheating, or from getting cheated on. Either way, mm. um, <laughs> as a player and a DM, just do your part as a player and know your rules like know mm-hmm. what you should be doing if you're yeah. the player um and if you if you really want to go the extra mile learn what your other players can do at the table so that but way then, uh, you don't want to be that guy that's like oh excuse me like you shouldn't be able to do that like right because i don't like telling other people what to do because at the end of the day D- uh, dungeons and dragons is different from all other games because it's a role-playing game mm-hmm. and you're supposed to derive the fun from just like you said telling a story right yeah um and you can't really cheat when you're telling a story, like. So. But but here's the here's the differences. We could all just sit around right now and tell a story. Yep. And that would be fine. Uh-huh. But we're choosing to play the game Dungeons and Dragons, which mm-hmm. has rules and stats and stuff for yeah. a reason. Yeah. So I think we should, if we're gonna just, if we just want to sit around and tell a story, we can do that, mm-hmm. and we don't have to have any rules, and we can just whatever we say is true. But the fact that we're choosing to play Dungeons and Dragons, we roll dice, we have mm-hmm. stats. That means we should try to adhere to these rules because the rules give you some type of structure structure and challenges yeah. and like yeah. mental exercises mm-hmm. like do i use my resources in this fight or do i just try Hold to save them, them just in case something happens later mm-hmm. what spells do i prepare every day because we could run into this scenario or this scenario and if i prepare this i might not be able to do that and vice yeah. all this thinking mm-hmm. that goes into the game that so just like compl- a subset of the game that's not just telling a story with your friends yeah, and I, and I completely understand that. Um, it's just that, so if you are choosing to use the, the rules um, to play this game, um, and you see the DM not, 
using the rules because I mean we were just saying that a DM should or at sometimes has to fudge dice rolls. That's when I think it's like okay then then it's okay for me to to do the same. Um, and and again I think it's it all comes back to the fact that you are a very specific type of DM and a very specific type of player. Yeah. Um, but there have been like really f- uh, free flowing <laughs> campaigns like the Sound Alchemist ran a, a really free flowing campaign. <laughs> That um, that felt like even if I was cheating, or even if I said I had a spell that I didn't have, you you still um, maneuvered your way through it because you're telling a story, right? Because I, I feel because like you were pretty new, yeah. Like you didn't you had, I had you no didn't know if what spells you prepared right. or if you even had yeah. spells. And that that ex- that happened exactly because there was challenges and like monsters that I'm like, okay, they're not gonna be able to yeah. take this down in like two turns. He's dead. Mm-hmm. And I did no damage to them. Like, oh well, they happened. It's- yeah, because a big flaw with um, being a rules uh, lawyer, uh, like it seems like you're you're kind of trying to say, um, it, it kind of sucks the fun out of the role playing or the the creative aspect of Dungeons and Dragons when you do say like, well, but did you prepare that spell this morning? It's like, yeah, but I didn't know that you were gonna throw a fucking troll. But at that's me. the point. That's the whole point of preparing spells. Yeah. That's like that's the mechanic of the game that if you don't prepare your spells, you're just completely ignoring that whole challenge of the game. Mm-hmm. Well, but so that's like the preparing part. Yeah, I, I kind of get that one. But at the same time, it's like I'm not going to stop the flow of the game to say, oh, by the way, let me prepare this real quick. Um, yeah. Well, so, it, and usually in a, in a group that you trust, you can just... You don't have to say, I prepare this spell, I prepare this spell, I prepare this spell. But if you're not preparing your spells and you're just accessing the whole spell list, then I might be like, okay, tell me what spells you prepare because you can just say whatever the hell you want on the mm-hmm. spell list. Yeah. And right. that's, I, I that, that can, takes a whole challenge out of the game yeah. that you're just ignoring. And if you don't want to have a challenge in your game, then don't play a game. Just tell a story. Uh, well, not necessarily. Because another thing, another flaw with the way that you're thinking about cheating in the, on the player's side is it does be it, it it becomes a situation of you versus the player, and if you're the if you're a DM and you all of a sudden think like this guy is cheating and I I need to like bring him down like punish him for you that. can you're the DM like but, but you, that's not you, how you should be interacting <laughs> with your players you just say oh I think Son Alchemist is cheating I'm gonna I'm gonna like completely destroy his and character. I yeah and I agree I agree you should not do that yes and that's why if you go into Dungeons and Dragons as a dm ready to punish those that do not follow the the rule book at the same time that you're not even following the rule book then then you create um a pretty like uh negative experience for mm-hmm. you and the player that that might be like fudging uh or you know bending the rules a little bit well i don't think what you're suggesting is bending the rules a little bit personally but <laughs> no it is because it's, it's i've never did something crazy like oh i'm a god now obviously right that is, that, really obvious. F- that is really funny because like the way i see the dm is they are the god of the world yeah they decide what happens what doesn't happen and like essentially they control everything mm-hmm. and it's funny because like on one side it's like you no know, you have to be law abiding the god set up these like quote unquote commandments slash rules to follow and you're like well why is why does he get to be a god why can't i have this power why do i have to follow this and it's like i sh- i have the means to almost rival god's power so why why would i not try to do that exactly yeah so one That's thing i think that we've kind of may have uh misrepresented or or i don't think i think you guys are going to disagree with me on this but i don't think the dm has all the power no um what do you mean yes and no yes yeah and what no. do you yes or no. explain yeah. i don't think a, because in a story, in a world where your players are making decisions that are impacting the world, mm-hmm. they have power in that. Yeah. So the DM doesn't have, I mean, obviously the DM could say, oh, you're stuck in a room, you can't move, you can't impact the world at all, but that's not a game. So as your players interact with your world, it has ripple effects and it. they have the power to do, you have the power hey. to cast fireball on a town yep. if you want to. Yep. And the DM can find ways to stop you, but... If they just say no, it doesn't happen, then that's not a game. A good DM. Yes. That's the thing. 
Because a bad DM could just be like, yeah, you cast Fireball, but nothing happens. Which I think is what I'm trying to get at. Like, mm-hmm. don't be that DM. Right. Which you're not. You, you, I think when you world build, there's logic and yeah. there's a clear, concise, but we've been in situations where sometimes it's just like, you could tell that logical, uh, things that you're doing don't have, uh, logical effects. So I guess I think the way we can make all of us happy mm-hmm. is find a group that you trust so that you don't have to cheat as a player, you don't, and if you don't have to bend the rules as a DM, so that way everybody is happy and they don't have to cheat. No, I don't. I don't agree <laughs> with that one. I think what we need to. Uh, I think what I think if there has to be an agreement between the DM and the player. Um, if you are a DM that's gonna follow the rules and wants to, his players to always follow the rules, let him know. But you could still have a lot of fun if both parties are cheating. Because mm-hmm. I've done it. I mean, it's it, a lot of fun. I guess we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on this because, like, if if you can find a group that's that that agrees with that and like is cool with that, then that's. I mean, no. If you, your fun is not bad fun, like yeah. your fun is not wrong. So if you can find people that'll subscribe to that way of thinking, then sure. Mm-hmm. What's funny is that I cheated um, a little bit in your game. Yeah, but but like like and, I said, I've, I'm juggling so fun. much. Yeah. That I don't have like the time to be like. Let me calculate his role, make sure he's doing all that math right and for every role that everybody makes. Yes, I, but oh, if I would have known you were cheating, I would not have liked that. Um, Even if it, like, if things went... Because obviously you know how the campaign went, right? Mm-hmm. Did you have fun? Yeah. Now that you know he cheated, does that mean you have you had less fun? A little does bit, that change, yeah. Does it that does. Change? It does kind of, like, mark the experience for me because... Just because, like, the experience could have been completely different. Not bad... Mm-hmm. just different it could have been better it could have been worse it could have been the same but i don't know i just i'm just the type of person that doesn't want to have to worry about my players cheating mm-hmm. the funny part is that in that campaign that we're talking about it was a total party kill mm-hmm. like you you killed that tree killed us mm-hmm. um so even with my cheating I, I couldn't pass that so that brings me to another point that i think um you, new players need to keep in mind as a player yes you can cheat like i've been telling you uh how <laughs> to <laughs> get um, podcast. but at the end of the day those are th- that, that cheating that you do is nothing compared to what um the dm can do yeah also and it's not going to affect the storyline all that much <laughs> specifically because oh specifically in situations no where way. it's like let's say i was rolling to see um it was my last, my last, um, what is it called? The uh, the three rolls that you do at death save. Yeah, save. it's my last death save. I roll it. I see that nobody saw what I rolled, and then I change it. Um, that situation, that's bad because that's a, a very um, pivotal moment in mm-hmm. the story. But if I'm rolling to do damage on a wolf, and there's ten other wolves, and I say I got an eighteen, when re- in reality I got an eight. It's that cheating doesn't really affect the story arc all that much, and that's what I was that's what I was getting at with your campaign. Like this cheating that I did do did not cause um, us to have Huge a total party. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Unless but, that okay. wolf surviving went on to do something. But else. also, if it didn't right. change that much, then why cheat? Because uh, it's, it's fun. fun. <laughs> what is it? I like to do hood rat yeah. things with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Um, no, also for me, the reason that I cheat is it, it is like because I've always had a this is going to be personal. So, <laughs> so, but I've always had uh, problems with like authority, mm-hmm. and the DM is an authority figure. So, by me, get kind of like what the sound alchemist was saying it's like you are God, but even in your God form, I'm still fucking you over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so that's I think not that's, that's it. you should it's orc mentality. I yeah. feel like you should <laughs> view the DM as another player. Not necessarily view them as not as a god, but as but the they, environment. Yeah, they're that's not. Tough, I think that's I tough. think it's tougher because they're not on the same level as you. Yeah, and that's I think that's why you kind of feel like you have to get even in a way. Yeah. And there's no way that the DM will ever be even to a player. And again, but that's it, not true. And that works with you because you are somebody that DMs with logic. 
There are sometimes. Oh, you know Logic? <laughs> <laughs> there are sometimes. We get together on World Build on the weekends. Yeah. Um, there are sometimes where that person does not, like the DM does not, uh, the effects that you have on the world are, they don't come out as logical. Like it just doesn't make any sense. And it goes back to the what we were saying where the consistency thing. If you pick up that your DM is not consistent, which in my mind, that's just cheating, right? Um, then that gives me like the, the the ability to just be like, all right, well, if you're not going to be consistent, why should I be consistent? But the it, the DM can change rule, like, well, can choose to omit rules or... Yeah. But yeah, that yeah. should come out at session zero. Or it should come out while you're playing before it ever comes up if yeah. it's something that you want to <clears throat> test out or something but yeah. what if it's a homebrew well, yeah just be like hey guys this is, i'm gonna change this is that cool we're gonna test it out for a little bit or whatever yeah. or just say we're doing it and just just so everybody knows so it's not like when you're on your death save and like oh if you roll a five or lower you die something like on the spot be like mm-hmm. oh this is this is because then you feel personally attacked yeah. yeah and i feel the same way what you just said i feel the same way but instead of the dm it's the player I think it's it's okay for the for the player to 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 fudge dice rolls unless it's a situation like you were saying where you know the plot is gonna uh, change. hang on the balance. Yeah, and I, and I said fudge dice rolls. I don't think that I've never fudged dice rolls. You just fudge modifiers, basically. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't think you should ever fudge dice rolls uh, as a player. Well, that I mean, I, it's I really the same have. thing. Modifiers. If it's not. Well, if I roll, if I say I roll a ten and I get a plus five, yeah. Or I just if I say I, if I roll a ten and I give myself a plus five or whatever. <laughs> yeah, if I, I get it. Yeah. If I roll a five and I say I have a plus ten, yeah. Or I roll a ten and I said I get a plus five. Yes, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're just you're just switching a different variable on the math equation. But the thing is, if you're adding like the plus ten, I feel like that's more noticeable. Than yeah. Adding a plus well, that's five. a hy- hyperbolic, like. But yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the um, same. You're, you're doing the same thing, just. In a different roundabout way. Yeah. Kind Instead of. of two plus three, it's, oh, you change the two or you change the three, but it's... it's you're getting the same result no yeah. matter which way you're doing it. Maybe, but that just feels worse. <laughs> I sure. Guess. Yeah. I and, think, and I think D&D is just about feels. Like, if you guys are, are having fun and you're fudging dice rolls and he's fudging dice rolls, then, the, you know, I keep having fun. I got, again, I couldn't disagree more, but hey, uh, you know... There's different people out there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. This is—I feel like this has been our most controversial episode of Dungeon Hammer yet, and yes. I love it. Mm-hmm. How do you guys feel about that? Do you agree with the creature of Dasionis or the one of Gersh? Yes, cheating is fun. Let's do hood rat shit together. <laughs> Comment down in the comment section below. Let us know how you guys have cheated or not cheated, or how you've dealt with cheaters. Um, and also check out our other podcast that we got. We're going to be talking about some interesting... What are we doing next? Next week? It is how to introduce new players to the game of D&D. Oh, yeah. So if you guys uh, want to check that out, subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. Spread it around. Spread the word. Yes. Right. And uh, we're all still friends after this podcast. They're going to kiss and make up. So Yeah. I'm always going to keep cheating. And docile creatures is gonna know that I'm cheating. <laughs> I'm just and never gonna, gonna DM for you ever That's again. A lie. You know you want to. So then, if you're a player, is that less? What do you mean? Like well, if you're, I, I if don't you're want a player, it as a player and you know that he's cheating, does that affect you less? Mm-hmm. It, it affects me as a person because I know that he's cheating. <laughs> Not as a DM, but as a person. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you heard it here, guys. Feelings and emotion trumps all. That's right. In D and D. This was Gersh 1. That was our creature. I am the Sound Alchemist, and we are out of here.